Okay, and we're back, and I wanted to do a little bit of rotations here. Um, in particular, real pulleys. Uh, <laughs> so often in mechanics, we, we live in physics land, uh, making all sorts of approximations and neglecting stuff, including pulleys. Uh, most of the time we, we have frictionless pulleys or massless pulleys, things that don't spin. But here's a case where uh, we need to know what exactly happens when they do spin, and how do they spin. Um, we know, for example, that uh, in order for anything to spin, or to change their rotational motion, you need a net torque. That's what torques do. And in the case of a pulley, uh, if you think of the, the diagram here, when you draw the forces in, um, in this case we have the two hanging masses, so we have the, the two weights, the two gravities, trying to make things move in opposite directions. We have uh, tensions acting on both those masses. Now normally, <coughs> what we've done in the past is we've always just had one tension in the string. So in other words, tension 1 is equal to tension 2 on the two sides of the, of the pulley. <coughs> now the way this works is, if you think about the point where these, these strings are first touching the pulley, uh, for example on the left hand side that's where we would draw tension 1 and on the right hand side is where we draw tension 2. Those are both causing torques trying to make this, the pulley spin in either direction. Now, if, if T1 is equal to T2, uh, there is no net torque and the pulley doesn't, doesn't spin. There's only one tension value in the entire rope. Well, in reality, that, that can't be true. In reality, tension 1 and tension 2 have to be different in order to create the, a net torque. So, having that little tidbit in our, our pockets, um, Basically what we have to do then are a couple things. Uh, we have both types of motion. We've got linear motion of the two masses. We've got rotational motion of the pulley. So that means we have to do torque equals I alpha for the pulley to account for rotational motion. And we have to do F equal MA um, for both of the masses. Okay, so for example, for mass 1, if we make the assumption that mass 1 is bigger than mass 2, then that ma mass 1 is going to fall. So that means uh, we have mass 1 times whatever the acceleration is. And according to our force diagram, that's going to be equal to its weight minus whatever tension 1 is. On mass 2, uh, that one is going to be moving upwards if it's the lighter we can do F equals MA just on it. It'll have the same acceleration value because they're tied together, but now tension 2 must be bigger than that mass's weight in order to accelerate upwards. So we basically have three unknown. That's typically how these things work. We don't know the acceleration, we don't know tension 1, we don't know net, uh, tension 2. So we need a third equation, and that's the torque equation. Now we can look at the pulley. So, in this case, uh, pulleys are usually disks, so that usually means that you have, um, for its moment of inertia, one half the mass of the pulley times its radius squared. Now, if there's no slipping between the rope and the pulley, that's a good thing because we can go ahead and write alpha in terms of linear acceleration divided by the radius of the pulley. Now, we look at the force diagram. Uh, if mass 1 is falling and mass 2 is going up, that means the pulley is going to spin around counterclockwise. So that means that the torque that tension 1 creates, tension 1 times the radius, times the sine of 90 degrees, that's the angle between the radius and the tension, uh, that's trying to make you spin counterclockwise. Tension 2 is creating a torque trying to spin you the other way, so we have to subtract those. Okay. Now we've got algebra to do because we've got this system with three unknowns. Um, in the torque equation, notice that the factor of r drops out all the way through. So we have this difference in tensions, tension 1 minus tension 2, is equal to 1 half the mass of the pulley times uh, the acceleration. Okay, and then we've got these other two equations down here. And depending on how you want to do it, I mean, there, there's a variety of things we could 
could try substitution wise um, to solve the system. I'm not going to go through and bore you with details of the algebra. Uh, but we do have three equations for typically three unknowns. We have f equals ma equations for the linear motions of the two uh, blocks. We've got torque equals I alpha for the rotational motion of the pulley. We have two different tensions, and that's really the key to this. That's the point that you should take away from this, is the tensions on the two sides have to be different. It's the only way you can get a net torque to make the pulley spin in the first place. So if you understand that concept and uh, how to set up Newton's second law for all this stuff, um, I trust you can do the math. You know, you might want to try this problem and finish it on your own. Um, I'm not going to worry about it here. So hopefully this helps and, uh, and it adds just another layer of, of reality to the work that we do in, in our physics. So I hope all is well and uh, until next time, we'll see you later.